to the topic, Christ's return. We're going to start in the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 6. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Read that again. Seeing it is a righteous thing. With God to recompense tribulation. To recompense what? Tribulation. To recompense what? Tribulation. So it's a righteous thing to repay trials and tribulation. Read. To them that trouble you. To these other nations that trouble us in this captivity. The scripture says it's a righteous thing. So all this talk of Christianity, God so loved the world. And he gave us so his only begotten son that's going for everybody. No, that's not going for everybody. Because somebody has to be repaid for the tribulation. And don't, don't fall into the oh, he's talking about Satan, he's talking about the devil. No. Remember, the devil is under God's control. He controls him. He doesn't have no issue with the devil. He tells him where to go, what to do. So all this talk about how Oh, um, we're all going to be in the kingdom together. God loves everybody. Um, um, you Israelite guys, what you're talking about, that black Jesus, he, yeah, that, that's not of God. According to the scriptures, read it again. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's a righteous thing for Christ to come pay back these other nations for what they did to us in this captivity. That's a righteous thing, read really. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And those that be troubled, those that are afflicted, come rest with us, read. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. With his mighty angels, read. In flaming fire, taking vengeance. In what? Taking vengeance. In flaming fire, taking vengeance. Hold that. Go to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. What is this talking about? In flaming fire, taking vengeance. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. Because I thought Christ was, you know, all about popsicles and bubble gum, you know, coming back giving hugs to everybody, hugs and kisses, you know, coming, you know, he came back, right? He's supposed to give hugs and kisses. Everybody's supposed to be, you know, everybody's supposed to be feeling the love of Christ, right? It says, in flaming fire taking vengeance. Isaiah 66, verse 15. Isaiah 66, 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. To render his what? His anger with fury. Uh, his love and kindness. His anger with fury. Read. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Mm -hmm. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. What does it mean, slain? What does it mean, slain? Somebody raise their hand. What does it mean by slain? Because that's not a, a, a common Negro word. Brother Mishael. They got no mic. Cry loud, brother. Cry loud. To be killed. To be killed. So Jesus Christ and his God so loved the world is coming back to kill people. Well, we're under grace and, and mercy. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ in your heart. But right here, read it again, verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Now, fire is not a calm thing. That is not a calm creation. And a sword is used for judgment, used in war, fighting with killing things with. So if Christ is coming back with fire and sword, how is this man soft? And why would he need to come back with fire and with sword? Read on. They that sanctify themselves yep. and purify themselves uh -huh. in the gardens, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. Eating what? Swine's flesh. So eating swine's flesh will get you killed. By who? By Christ. So all our, our people up in these Christian churches, 
um, having their receptions after their weddings and uh, whatnot, eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, they will be put to death. They will be put to death. From there, go to Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. Because in verse 15 it said, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Zechariah chapter 5. The book of Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. Uh -huh. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. A flying roll is talking about the chariots. Because when you read Ezekiel chapter 1, it, it describes it as being a wheel inside of a wheel. All right, read. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. When you read the Zondervan, some of the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, it gives you the breakdown of a cubit. It's a measurement, all right? That measurement is from the tip of your middle finger to your elbow. When you wonder how big a cubit or how long a cubit is, the measurement on it, it's from your middle finger to your elbow. Everybody understand? It should be as most of y'all's out of his dictionaries. Read on. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. This is the what? The curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. That curse is what we read back in Isaiah 66. With them chariots coming down. With fire and swords killing people. All right, ain't talk about him coming back with popsicles and bubble gum for everybody. Read. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. Uh -huh. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. So, if you swear and if you lie, is that a sin? Is swearing and lying a sin? Hello. Yes. So, you will be killed if you are a liar. If you swear, the Most High will be sending Christ down upon you to kill you. Read. Really. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. For those that still read. And into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. Uh -huh. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. How many of y'all seen that movie uh, Independence Day? Remember Independence Day? Remember that big, humongous um, mothership or chariot, whatever it was? Remember what it did to the White House? Imagine that to your house. Because you want to lie, you want to steal, you want to swear by, by God's name falsely. That's what it's referring to. It said and they shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So chariots are going around destroying homes of sinners. Everybody understand that? Go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Second, verse 7. Start at verse 6. Start at verse 6. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a verse, right verse eight, verse eight, verse eight, mm -hmm. in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. On what? In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. On them that know not God. What does that mean, brothers? Who can answer that question for me? On them that know not God. What is it referring to? You can raise your hand for me, brother Adar. Your hand went up first. Those that know not God, meaning they're not keeping God's commandments. You got a preach up for me? Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3? You sure? 3, 2, verse 3. There we go. Let's get that right fast for those that don't know. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So for our people to say, oh, me and God, we have a relationship, we have an understanding, but they're not keeping God's commandments. Read. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Is a, what? Is a liar. Read. And the truth 
is not in him. So for you to have a relationship with God, to have an understanding of God, you have to be keeping the commandments. You understand his will when you keep his commandments. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. What precept is that? That's the will of God, yeah. Don't blur it out, though. You good, you good. Matter of fact, Messiah, give, give you the mic, Messiah. You have an understanding of what God's will is by keeping his commandments. What precept is that? Oh, Psalms 111, verse 10. There you go. Psalms 111, verse 10. Write that down for, your, for those that don't know that. Psalms 111, verse 10. A fear of the Lord is the, is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all they that keep his commandments. Not just a plain understanding. It says a good understanding. So you understand God's will when you keep his commandments. All right? Jump back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. Uh -huh. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. So those that ain't keeping the commandments, flaming fire and vengeance upon them, read. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That don't, don't, that don't obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What was the gospel of Christ? <laughs> okay, I got uh, Acts 5... 531. All praises. All praise. Acts 531. Let's get that for those that are unfamiliar with Acts 531. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 31. Uh -huh. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Repentance to Israel. Not everybody. Repentance to Israel. So that's the gospel. Christ coming back. For the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to give them repentance for their sins. If you don't agree with that, if you still trying to save Becky and uh and, and uh and Tommy Boy at your job when they're not trying to keep God's commandments, what's gonna happen to you? Go to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13, start at verse 14, please. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 14. And it... Start at 13, I'm sorry. Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 13. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Let's talk about after all these nuclear missiles start dropping, read. And it shall be as the chaste roe, uh -huh. and as a sheep, that no man taketh up. Mm -hmm. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. So all nations are going to gather back within themselves, but read. Every one that is found shall be thrust through. Uh -huh, read. And every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So every one of our people, the Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that are still trying to join on to those other nations, what's going to happen to them? And every one that is found shall be thrust through, uh -huh. and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. They will be slain with the sword. For not ready to let go of the Edomites, not ready to let go of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Ishmaelites, all these other nations you're trying to hold on to? When Christ comes back, you better get it together. That's what it's saying. Go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Start at verse 9. Verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9. Uh -huh. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord? Who shall be punished with what? Everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. From there, go to Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31. Mm -hmm. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So when the Son of Man talked about Christ shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. How many angels is that? 
see what, let's see what we read. How many angels is that? Brother Azariah, how many angels is that? Just for reference sake. Just for reference sake. Because we're going to read later on about when destruction happens, this is exactly who's going to be the spearhead of that destruction. But for reference sake. Shalom, uh, is it the Revelations 21 and 12? It's Revelations what? Revelations 21 and 12. What that say? Revelations 21 and 12. Twelve and no, no, no. That's not it. Try again. Somebody else? Nobody? Soldier Ezekiel. Hey, shalom, leadership. Shalom, brother. That be on um, Psalm sixty-eight and was that seven? Sixty-eight, seventeen. That's what you want to say? I believe so. Let's see, let's get that. Psalm 68, 17, about the 20,000 chariots. Yes. Yeah, that's one of them. That's another one. But read that, read that. The book of Psalm, chapter 68, verse 17. Uh -huh. The chariots of God are 20,000, uh -huh. even thousands of angels. So inside those chariots, we know that there are angels, even thousands of angels. Read. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Okay, that's one of them. It's another one. Another one. Any takers? Nobody? All right, write this down in your precept, all right? Go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Because Christ was not soft, correct, Officer Elida? That's right. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Uh huh. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, uh -huh. the heavenly Jerusalem, uh -huh. and to an innumerable, innumerable company of angels. So, so many angels you can't even count them. That's how Christ is rolling. Everybody understand that? So when he's sitting on his throne, imagine him sitting there surrounded by angels. Mighty men. Ready to do whatever he says when he says it. Hmm. I, would, I still want to test. You know, I still want to test the world out, though. I still want to test out sin. I'm, I'm happy smoking weed and you know with my with my two girlfriends on the side. Reading this. Go back to Matthew 25 verse 31. Matthew chapter 25 verse 31. Uh -huh. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, uh -huh. as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Mm. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Uh -huh. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. Prepared for you from the beginning. That's what it means by from the foundation of the world. Read. For I was for I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, mm -hmm. or or nation or naked and clothed thee, or when saw we sick, we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. Uh -huh. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it. Unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So what Christ is telling the people that when we look at each other as brothers and sisters in here keeping the commandments, you shouldn't just look at each other like this is brother Elijah Carr, that's Officer Tazawan, or that's Captain Kabosh. We're supposed to look at one another like we Christ. Going back to that class about brotherly love and charity, It'll be easy for you 
to show love and charity to your brothers and sisters if you look at them as if you were doing it for Christ. So you might have an issue with somebody. That day, Christ is just tripping. Christ came at you reckless one day. That's how you got to look at it. You can't be so quick to, to be harsh in your response to one of your brothers and sisters when you're supposed to look at them like they're Christ. Everybody understand that. So when you do something for one of your brothers and sisters, you're not just doing it for them. You're doing it for Christ. Everybody understand that? Read on. Verse 41. Uh -huh. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. So those that ain't doing that, those that are not keeping the commandments, not showing love and charity to their brothers, read. Depart from me. He said, depart from me. Get away, read. Ye cursed into everlasting fire. Into what? Everlasting fire. Oh, you get everlasting chances. Everlasting fire. Read. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Going back to 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, read. For I was in hunger. And you gave me no meat. Mm -hmm. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. To what? Everlasting punishment. Into everlasting punishment. So say you might be willing to take a chance with that fire. Well, I touched the stove before when I was little. It didn't hurt that bad. I didn't get burnt that bad. So that fear might not be in you. Go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, start at verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, start at verse 8. Verse 8, they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. So you understand the truth. What is the truth according to the Bible? Mm. Brother Daniel. At John 17, 17. John 17, 17. That's one. That's yeah. one. Psalms 119, 142. There you go. Psalms 119, 142. Let's get that for those that are unfamiliar. The book of Psalms, chapter 119. Verse 142, uh -huh. thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy what is the truth? And thy law is the truth. Go back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 10. So if you understand the truth, you understand God's laws. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 9. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 9. Uh -huh. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him what is love according to the bible brother raise their hand give it, give it to your son give it to your son in the back soldier joseph First John 5 and 3. First John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God, and we keep his commandments. Get Let's get that right first. Whatever. The book of First John, chapter 5, verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. What does grievous mean? <laughs> <laughs> Give it back to your other son, Soldier Joseph. Um, it means not hard. It's not hard. Ain't nothing hard about brothers letting their beard grow. Ain't nothing hard about a sister putting on a dress or a modest skirt or in a head cover. There's nothing hard about not eating shrimp, pork, crab, and lobster. All right? For, for example, you brothers, 
All right, with your beards on your face. Some of y'all got big beards, some of y'all got little beards. Some of y'all barely have beards. All right, but listen, put it this way for our brothers out there that take pride in saving off their facial hair. Just think about the logic of why is it on your face to begin with? If you made in God's image, correct? Why would he make for hair to grow on your face and on your head for? It? If you was supposed to shave it off. Everybody understand that? So what's hard about maintaining it, trimming it up, making it look nice? Letting it grow. What's hard about that? Brother Michael, you got a big beard. Is your beard hard to maintain? It is? Oh man. I want a big beard. My, my brother Jeff right here in the front row, is your beard hard to maintain? It's not hard. It's not hard. Some of you sisters over here, is it hard to put on a dress and a skirt every day? No. No, it's not. Is it hard to put your head covering on? Is that difficult? No. It could be when you wear two and three like my wife does. I know it could be a problem. I don't know how she does it. Why do they need two and three hair wraps on at once, man? <laughs> What's the point? Is it, is it, I don't know, is it the shape? It gives it a shape, make it look nicer? Is that what it is? It's just a shake in the hair, like, yeah, that's what it is. It's the color. It's, yeah, it's the color, yeah, yeah. I switched, switched the colors up. On this side is pink, on that side is orange. They can't do it like that. Officer, yeah, so. that's swag. That's that swag, yeah. That's, that's, that's that Israelite uh, princess swag, I guess. All praises. Make it look good. It's your heritage. It's your heritage. All right? It's God's commandments. It's your heritage. So rock your beards, rock your dresses, your skirt. Is it hard to not eat pork? How many of y'all miss chitlins? I know some of y'all used to eat chitlins up in here. I don't know how y'all dealt with that, bro. How did y'all take that smell in the house, bro? Oh my goodness, I remember when I was younger, my grandma cooked that, man. I, I, hey, listen, it's like nine in the morning, Thanksgiving. I got up and went outside at nine in the morning. Where you going? I'm going outside to play. Ain't nobody out there, so. I'm going to find a rock or a stick to play with. I ain't, I ain't staying in this house. I can't do this. But it's not hard to keep God's commandments. Everybody understand? If you love God, keep his commandments. There's wisdom in those commandments. It betters your life, all right? You're not eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. You ain't got to deal with the gout, with the high cholesterol, none of that. You, uh, by not shaving, you ain't got to deal with the razor bumps, none of that. You sisters not wearing pants, you ain't got to deal with all the, you know, the stuff that comes with that. You know, we ain't going to go into the details of it. Y'all know what happens, all right? You ain't got to deal with none of that. When you break God's commandments, there is affliction upon it. And we read now that when you break God's commandments, when Christ returns, there's going to be some major affliction upon you. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 10. Read that for me. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. So something that you most afraid of, he can punish you. You read in Matthew chapter 25, the last verse, he said, with everlasting punishment. So you still think Christ soft, right? He can punish you with your own imagination. Something that you're terrified of happening to you, he can make it happen to you. Because you want to break his commands. You don't want to keep his laws. You don't want to take heed to his gospel. So he can have something happen to you that you're most afraid of. Who trying to challenge that? Who that brave? So you're not afraid of fire, you're not afraid of the sword, but you going to challenge my own imagination. Because you all, everybody in here got something that they're most afraid of. Something that you, you, if, if it takes you to take yourself around the other side of the earth to get away from it, you would do it, right? But Christ said, if you don't want to keep my commandments, I can punish you with that. Everlasting punishment. So let that fear sit in the back of your mind, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 10, the next time you want to think about breaking one of God's commandments. Everybody understand that? Everybody thinking now, nah, look, I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From there, let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. 
The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, mm -hmm. and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. They go them titles again for Christ, read. And in righteousness, and in what? In righteousness, read. he doth judge and make war. He does what? Judge and make war. Now nah, he pass out popsicles and bubble gum. He doth judge and make war. Nah, he come back with hugs and kisses. He judge and make war. This is our Lord and Savior we're reading about here. He doth judge and make war. Read. His eyes were as a flame of fire, uh -huh. and on his head were many crowns. Read. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So this man got names that we don't even know about. So all our people that fall off into that doctrine about the name, 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 he got a name that we don't even know. The scriptures say his name is the word of God. And what is the word of God? The commandments, right? He's the word made flesh, meaning he was the perfect example of how to walk. The commandments. That was another name. But it says he has a name that we don't even know but him himself. So they need to chill with that one. From there, hold that. We're coming back. Go to Isaiah 47, verse 3. You got something? Yeah, real quick. Get a Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. Because today we was at camp. We had the same brother that uh, Officer Tazawan has smashed with that name doctrine. Because going here, he said it had a, a name that no man knew. These are all just titles that we call Christ. You know what I'm saying? But let's see what else Christ is called. <laughs> Zechariah 6 and 12. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. Spirit. And spake unto him, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch. Name is what? <laughs> is the branch. Nah, it's Yahweh Shai. <laughs> is the branch. <laughs> said Christ's name is the branch. Just letting you know that these are just titles. We don't have the true name of Jesus. <laughs> Alright? That's it. <laughs> What's your name, brother? Stick. <laughs> you know what? And then, how, how, in Isaiah 9 and 6, it starts off with his name being wonderful. So let's just all call Jesus wonderful. <laughs> Faithful and true. Go ahead. All praises. So just another way to knock off that name doctrine. But hold that, go to Isaiah 47 verse 3. Because we all expected Christ to come back. You know, you're coming back with hugs and kisses, man. I'm telling y'all, man. You're coming back with hugs and kisses. The man, book of man, Isaiah. Man. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 3. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Talk about the other nations, read. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Uh, no, thou shalt no more be upheld. Read. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. So this going into tribulation. Read. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Uh -huh. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. That's going into sin. When it talks about nakedness and shame, it's going into your sin. Read. I will take vengeance. I will take what? Take vengeance. Read. And I will not meet thee as a man. It says he will not meet thee as a man. So when he comes back, he's coming back with destruction. Back to Revelation chapter 19 verse 12. Revelation chapter 19 verse 12. Uh -huh. His eyes were as a flame of fire, mm -hmm. and on his head were many crowns. Uh -huh. And he had a name written that no man knew. But he himself, you know? and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Stop. It said he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. What is that talking about? Brother Azariah. He over on the wall. Officer Eladon went over this last week. Uh, Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. Let's get that. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Isaiah 63, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1. Uh -huh. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Mm. 
This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Traveling in the greatness of his strength, so his countenance was very strong, read. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. So he has a lot of power, read. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Thou what? Art thou red in thine apparel? So he just came from Edom, just came from Basra, and his apparel is red, right? What does that mean? What did he just get done doing? He just got done killing. He's going to explain himself, Reed. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Uh -huh, so he his garment is dripping with blood, Reed. I have trodden the wine press alone. And he did it what? Trodden the wine press alone. Remember those angels we read about in Psalms, right? Now, them angels is going to be with him, but they are going to be behind him when we read back in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So their garments is white and clean. Why? Because Christ was doing all this killing by himself. When he starts off, he going in by himself. His angels is just there. They just walking behind following. Watching him as he does his business. The father's business. So y'all want to keep playing with that man, right? Who want to keep playing with him? Anybody? No takers? No takers. It's just one man, though. It's just one man. We can take one man, can't we? No, we can't do that. Not this one, man. We can't do that. He is by himself with an army of angels behind him killing things. So much killing that his garment was soaked in blood. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org